So I'm here with Ruben Oslund, a filmmaker um, for uh, the, the movie Play, which I'll show right there to uh, the folks right at home. Um, this is your third film. Um, you were here in 2008 with Involuntary. Yeah. I'm always curious about this, is that there's a lot of filmmakers that end up switching sections. They do our Sultan Regar one yeah. year, yeah. and two years later they do Director's Sports. Do you feel any difference between the sections? Well, what I like about Kanzan uh, is that uh, it has a history of being a political section, mm -hmm. and it started out in a political action. And actually, you, you, you can feel that difference from the official selection, because Frédéric Boyer, our, uh, who is the programmer, uh, are selecting films that, that have a political subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and and uh, uh, I mean that 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 he had said, Frederick Boyer said something like that he has done no compromises when he's done the, the selection. So yeah. he he is not going for like famous people or whatever. He's just going for exactly his taste. Yes. Uh, and and uh, so well, and, and he likes like this kind of movie. So so that makes mm -hmm. Kazan a really interesting section. How is your experience so far with this film? Like, how, how how do you get a like? How do you feel out Cannes on a personal level as a filmmaker? Well, I'm I'm interested to be here because it's prestige. Mm -hmm. and the prestige gets uh, then you get the um, possibility to talk about the content. Uh, so and can I mean Cannes is a special place because you have the market here, mm -hmm. and then you have the the, the art house films here, mm -hmm. and they I mean a, a, a film shot on a DV. In, from Iran can get the same focus as a like a hundred million dollar mm -hmm. budget mm -hmm. uh, with all stars. So I I think there's something unique about can that commercial uh, draw attention to quite small productions. Mm. Uh, do you, do you feel a sense that that there's a movement or something occurring in Sweden right now in, in contemporary filmmaking? <clears throat> yes, I think so in a way, and I think uh, that. Uh, like 10 years ago, there were not a lot of confidence in Swedish filmmaking, but I think there is a confidence now. And uh, I think that uh, I really would like to be a part of, of something interesting to happen in Sweden. And I want this to be the most interesting time of uh, Swedish cinema, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and I mean, Platform Produktion, which is the production company that I run together with Erik Hammerdorf, who is the producer. We already from the beginning set the goal that we uh, have to make films that are are traveling around the world and, and, and get exposed in mm -hmm. all over the world uh, and not only in Sweden. So this has been an outspoken uh, goal uh, and uh, um, I think that we have started to achieve that uh, quite quickly. Okay, so the play, it's something that you picked out of the headlines. Actually, I'm feeling that the best films so far in the festival, that's from my personal experience, are items that are pulled from the headlines and then the filmmaker brings his own um, style, his own vision to the idea. Mm -hmm. So, yours is very peculiar. It's a it's a news newspaper clipping that your producer produced uh, showed to you. Yeah. Um, and then my question to you is, um, you had the story, and there could have been twenty ways to film it, but you yeah. filmed it in a very specific uh, stylistic way yeah. um, zoom shots um, long takes mm. which we see in your previous film if I'm mm. if I'm not mistaken mm. um, uh, slight pans mm. there's an observational mm. aesthetic to some some scenes mm. not all scenes mm. but mm. Uh, particularly the first one mm. did you want to um, did you want to emphasize more on the group and therefore you felt that you needed to enlarge your camp uh, your your canvas yeah in a way, I think, yeah. I, I um, involuntary actually the thematic was about group behavior, and and I, I think there's something in, interesting when people are relating to each other and the way that our bodies are placed. I mean, the distance with, between you and me are interesting, mm -hmm. uh, and I think the framing is a way to uh, try to show. A, uh, a wider perspective than the psychological answers. I'm, I'm not looking for psychological answers. I think I look for behavior answers. Yes. So, uh, and uh, I mean, for play, uh, if involuntary were about an individual ending up in a conflict with their group, uh, for me, play is two groups that are colliding. Yes. And I mean, the, uh, this time you might even need 
a larger frame because of that. Yeah. You have two groups that yeah, are yeah, supposed yeah. What, what I like about the long shot and what I like about the real time aspect that are in the scenes yeah. are that you can highlight very small details and you can make them as valuable as very dramatic details. Mm -hmm. So the, the most dramatic point is not when, when they are fighting on the tram. Uh, the most dramatic point is when, when you see one of the boys are just sitting there and when they are grabbing the, uh, a bag or something like that. So, so the real time aspect actually brings out things that you from the beginning wouldn't thought would be the most important part of the scene and suddenly it's a, a small small detail is like this is what yeah. the scene is about and you couldn't say it in advance in a way uh, so yes I think it, it brings out yeah many golden moments in that way how much how much of an input did these eight kids come have on oh, their characters a lot of input okay uh, yes and uh, uh, I mean, the way I write the script is that I first write it down what I think I have an idea of the scene, but then I test it with actors okay. and I rewrite it. And uh, sometimes the dialogue is very precise and they, they have to follow the dialogue exactly. And a lot of the times they uh, have to write, uh, go around flags uh, through, through the scene. So they have certain spots they have to go okay. to. they to, have to uh, hit. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, but uh, aside from that, then they are quite free. Uh, and but when we are on set, the, uh, the the things that they say and the things that they do are very precise from something that we have decided. Okay. We work towards the, uh, how the scene should look and mm -hmm. how it should be by a lot of improvis. The bad cop, good cop. Yeah, yeah, okay. They they mention it towards the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're very. Sure. The, it's yeah. it's almost as if they studied it. Yeah, exactly. Now I like I try to to read the less material yeah, possible. Yeah. Um, so I, maybe yeah. you put in the press notes, yeah. but um. So that's my. I was surprised that they were be able that they were able to um, know the name of the game, if yeah, you will. Yeah. Um, but the, the that decision is, to include that. That's what yeah, I'm curious about. Yeah. Well, uh, since since uh, I'm inspired by interviews that I have made with the the, the perpetrators and victims. Uh, okay. Uh, the perpetrators told me how they did the, the, those kind of robberies. I mean. Uh, they made it, uh, it's a rhetorical trap that they call the brother trick. And, uh, and they did this for almost 50 times. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were judged for doing it 50 times. So I mean, if you repeat something like that over and over again, you get quite uh, intelligent in playing that character. Mm -hmm. And he, he told me that a method for the uh, brother trick is that one plays the character of a good cop and the other one plays a uh, character of the bad cop. So the bad cop goes, okay, you stole a cell phone from my kid brother. Now I, I have to solve this. And he is go, he's acting in a threatening way. Yeah. But the good cop goes, okay, guys, please listen to me. I, I, I don't think that you stole the phone, but we have to solve this in a proper way. Because, uh, well, he's angry because, yeah, yeah he's I, 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 he's I want to I give you the advice that we have to follow and, sh and show. But I, you don't have anything to be afraid of. If the cell phone is yours, mm -hmm. just show it and then you can leave. Mm -hmm. So they did this in a very sophisticated way, and I, I, because they did it so many times, they developed it. Okay, okay. And the reason that I really wanted it in, in, the, in the text, because they were speaking about it in the end, as you said, they were speaking about that. Well, I played bad cop, I should get more on yes. the valuables. So, yes. No, but well, I play good cop, it, it's better to play good cop, or yeah, which well, is, I won the race, and, and yeah, so on. Yeah, yeah. so, and that was something that he told me you know, uh, about those occasions that afterwards they, they were like uh, comparing who did most uh, and uh, <laughs> the one that did most can get to pick first. And the people that these kids that you interviewed, yeah. were, they, were they aware that somewhere else in the world in some other context that it's used actually as, as a real technique? Yeah, yes. Okay, they were yeah. aware of that. Yeah, yes. Okay. And I mean... The thing about this brother trick is that my mother uh, read a novel from the 1800s, and he, she read uh, they used the brother trick in this novel. Okay. And so, so this is it's it's an old way of um, controlling the game, and I mean, uh, I think that this rhetoric is something that you, know, you all also use in politics. So you create a problem uh, that doesn't exist. Okay. And uh, you, you might have uh, something else in your interest when you, uh, okay, so let's say we have to invade this country. And we say, we, it might be nuclear weapons over there. So we have to go in there. And you can use that rhetoric to actually go into the country. 
uh, uh, but we are not sure that is this the issue mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. or is there something? Is there a hidden agenda here? Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that I mean, since uh, the victims were scared of the robbers, uh, they are setting up the rules of the game, and even though the victims know that those rules are not true, they are playing after their rules because mm -hmm. yeah, because of the, the scare of the chaotic situation. And I think it's so interesting how the robbers. Uh, like set up the game and uh, the victims played along uh, and I think that the victims also are a part of, of, course. of the game. And because they're familiar with the, 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 the vocabulary in a way, they're familiar with the ideas, yeah. competition, little boys, yeah. games, um, group group games, mm. uh, sports. Mm. It's very much part of that their curriculum, part of their, their, their thing. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's one pivotal scene where it's almost as if they team up yeah. in order to go get the, the, the one that's hesitant. Yeah. It's a really, really interesting psychological uh, examination, if you will. When adults should be getting involved, they're not, and when they, when they think it's politically correct to get involved, yeah. they do. Exactly. And yeah. you, you kind of allude to that later on in the film. I'll, I'll discuss it after, but um, I was wondering if that was a conscious decision on your part to have people that are um, Participant, not participants, but they're 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 bystanders. Yeah. And they're not acting out when they should. No. Are you making like a, a statement about about that? No, I think that I think that there's a very interesting case that I think uh, is pointing out something just about this. And it was a, a woman who got beaten up for half an hour in New York, and uh, she was beaten up so bad so she died. And there were 30 witnesses to this event, and no one did call the police. So in the beginning, uh, it started a media debate in the U.S. And in the beginning, they were asking themselves, what, what kind of society have we created when we don't care about the individuals? Uh, and oh, our society has turned so cold and so on. But then uh, behavior um, scientists start to look at the situation. And they came out with the idea, if something bad is happening on the other side of the street, uh, grab the one next to you and say, hey, this isn't right. We should do something. And then you can create uh, a platform for reacting. Mm -hmm. But if you are walking around and you think you have to go in there and play the Anglo-Saxon hero, uh, then it's very hard to do something. Mm -hmm. so, so, so they actually came up with a behavior idea on how to deal with situations like this. And of course you are afraid when something like this happens. Of course you are afraid when, when people are acting in another way in a, a public uh, public space yeah. and it's hard to, to go in and it's hard to act and you don't want to act in prejudice uh, uh, like w when the five black boys are robbing three white boys you are afraid to do something why shouldn't why couldn't they be friends of course they can be friends yeah. and, and and there are so many <clears throat> things when I, I have read the trial documents about this that shows that the layer of the kids are like a parallel world to the layer of the of the adults, and and I can remember it from when I went to school. It's like it's like a lawless age in yeah. a way. So so kids are having laws and rules, and which it's very hard for adults to go go in and say, hey, stop it, don't do like this. Of course, there's a better way to 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 deal with this kind of situation than they are doing in the film. But I think that. Um, uh, this is something that I really wanted to investigate in the film. And, and parallel to that is, I think I think you do an interesting thing is that you you investigate. There's like a code between the victim child and victim aggressor child, mm. and how they kind of like they kind of like don't when the adult world is there to support them or potentially help them. Mm. I mean, you do have a, an exceptional case where where you break from that mold, but for the most part. The victims don't don't um, make that contact with the adult world, or they they kind of like keep it to themselves. Mm -hmm. Is this part of the what you you found in your research? Yes. Okay. I mean, there were like two cases when when the, the victims shout out to say, "Hey, they're robbing us!" And 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 at that time, the robber just quit. So there were no robberies when they did like that. And there were so few times uh, they actually did this. And and. Um, it's about something about that human being are very afraid of losing face in front of each other. You don't want to make a drama. You you want to avoid the drama, mm -hmm. uh, and you are willing to go very very far to avoid the drama. And I think that's interesting with what, uh, how the one of the perpetrators are, are acting when he is in this situation. In the end, when the fathers are addressing him and say, 
you shouldn't do this. Yeah. Then he's like acting out because you know that it, this is going to be a, a shameful situation for the fathers uh, if I start to scream and and uh, and and making a big drama of it. So. Going back to uh, the scene, um, the, the the fairly violent scene. Um, well, not violent. Well, no, it was fairly violent. Um, but I think it's not very much violent if you compare it to other films, actually. No, for sure, yeah. for sure. But it's it's a um, because the camera is there for such a long time, and because yeah. the way you frame it is that there's there's elements that are happening outside of the tram, mm. and when they do happen, when that tram door opens up, yeah. it's it really is you feel as if you're a bystander there, sitting yeah, like you're great. you're standing up, that's you're great. you're in like one passenger yeah. uh, passenger away. Yeah. Um, how complicated was that to set <laughs> set that up, or to, to get these kids into a into um, more than just a play mode, but like, you know, you have to feel victimized. Like, yeah. how, how did you coach them in that, uh, with regards to that specific scene, without giving out any well, I, I, Well, I mean, that scene is something that we worked a lot on, uh, and I'm, the shooting of it took three days. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, to, to, to gather all the energy and, uh, and the concentration you need for that scene, you, you build up okay, in day three, all of us should perform the best we can do. And when you are five, okay, now it's five takes left. Everybody concentrate, come on, we have five takes, come on now. It's like almost a game, a football game or something. That, and everybody are very concentrated and everybody, I think everybody enjoys this kind of building up pressure. Okay. Uh, and, and So you find yourself being a director slash coach maybe. Yes, in a way. yes I do. And I think the things that I, I say are more like scream louder. No, I'll go there instead. I don't. I don't use like you should think that your parents are uh, no yeah, nothing yeah. like that. But uh, so only a very very uh, um, direct. Um, one one thing that I absolutely adored in the, in this film is that you you um, you take us away from 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 this journey, this this day long journey, by placing us in a completely abstract context. I was wondering. Um, is this something I have because I haven't seen your previous film? Is this something that you normally do? Because I could refer to, you know, like the Roy's mm. of Sweden, like or other filmmakers mm. that that will include incorporate something like that to kind of like give some reprieve to the audience. Yeah. Is this is this something that? Why did you include that? Let's say like. Well. Um First of all, I really like Roy Anderson. I think he's one of the best directors that exists, actually. Yes. And, and, uh, um, and the, hu the humor, in, the humor in this specific scene, and the yeah. fact that we, we we were brought back to it. I mean, I mean, I was you know I was dying of laughter. Yeah. And yeah. and 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 it's very specific. I mean, you would give such a thing to many filmmakers, and wouldn't be able to do such a thing like that. Yeah. I was just wondering. Well, I think that the scenes that I like most in my own movies are the ones that could be humorous in one second and the next time it's horrifying. Mm -hmm. And because I think it, it's interesting when you see uh, real life or existence on the other side of the street, uh, it's absurd and horrifying at the same time. And and um, so and I, and I still want the audience to have the opportunity to read my scenes as both uh, humorous and horrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's a result of me stepping back uh, in a way. I step back uh, what, what I think. I, I don't want to put my feelings too much on, on the film. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I feel a lot of things about those scenes and I feel a lot about the actions that are taking place. I want to be, have it a voyeuristic style. So as, as you said, I want exactly that you should feel that you are one of the passengers in this tram. Uh, and, and the real time is aspect that highlights that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I was la like when she was when the when the passenger was laughing, I was laughing along mm -hmm. with her. I mm -hmm. felt like as if I was in the cart, you know, like mm -hmm. it, was, it was really well well executed. And what what I, what I really wanted to highlight with that uh, the scene from the train is that uh, uh, for me. Uh, the, the whole show takes place in the train. We the, we, the audience, are sitting in first class and watching this film about a quite serious problem. And we are in first class. We, we, don't, we are not the one that in into this uh, trouble. Uh, uh, and uh, we don't have to do anything about it because we just hear a little bit about it and someone is t telling us in the speaker that there's a small problem. Uh, and still we just have to watch and then we go out on the street and we are in, in Cannes. Yeah.
You do decide to go into the backstory of one kid in mm. particular, um, and which uh, alludes to the mystery of of the item in the train, which I don't want to go into, but mm -hmm. but it could there could be a linkage there. Yeah. And, and, but after that, um, there, I felt as if you were doing, um, you were preparing us for another statement, when um, the the boy is confronted for his actions by an adult when he's finally yeah. confronted, and then. That scene plays into a comment that a woman makes about Swedish society. Maybe not Swedish society, but but you know, um, maybe Scandinavian society. I, I don't know. Yeah. But um, about the immigrant issue. Yeah. I was wondering that if that implantation, if that, if this, this is another uh, piece of um, piece of. Uh, a puzzle that you wanted to include into the yes. into the discourse, the full discourse. <clears throat> I mean, I, I mean, why why is it provoking that we have five kids robbing three white kids? Well, because there is an unbalance in society. I mean, um, um, in general, black people are poorer than white people, mm -hmm. and and I think that this is the unbalance that is provoking us when we see an image of this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good that we are provoked because I think a, a provo uh, the provoked feeling of us is that we don't like to see an unbalance. We don't like unbalance. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I mean, the woman mm, in the film, she represents a way of trying to deal with this problem that is we, we have to be nice to immigrants because they have had a hard time and so on. And they have uh, not the, the same same privileges uh, opportunities yeah exactly and she's right mm -hmm. in one way but still she is victimizing them mm -hmm. and it it's, it makes them in a position where they are lower than than she is because, yes uh, yeah and mm, and the father in this scene he has a, a different way to uh, uh, go into this problem and, and I think none of those individuals have the solution of the problem mm -hmm. because the problem is on a higher level it's on an economic level mm -hmm. so if the economical uh, s uh, situation of this would be solved then then there wouldn't be provoking to show five black boys robbing three you know, white kids but there are only individuals mm -hmm. I'm not trying to send them to be represent for anything there are five individuals that have used the image of the black man that exists in our society because in our society a black man stands for something someone who is poor mm -hmm. and might want to change that situation mm -hmm.